Okay guys, welcome to another uh, That Was The Year That Was. This year we're up to 1980. Um, now this was a bit of a, a classic year for video games, but just uh, very quickly before we start, top 10 music, um, back then was Don McLean crying, and it did indeed. Barbra Streisand, Woman In Love, yep, less said about that one the better. ABBA, Super Trooper, don't know about that. The theme from MASH, that was uh, number 4 I think it was, number 5, whatever. Dex's Midnight Runners, Gino, that wasn't uh, too bad a track. The Police, Don't Stand So Close To Me. Kelly Marie, Feels Like I'm In Love. Odyssey, Use It Up And Wear It Out. Okay, never heard of that one. Detroit Spinners, Working My Way Back To You, classic track. And the very last one, Kenny Rogers, Coward Off The County, never heard of that one either. Um, the couple of top sort of movies back then, or classic movies, was Raging Bull and Elephant Man. Uh, and this was the year, obviously, we had the uh, the Moscow Summer Olympics, where America famously didn't attend. And we also had the Winter Olympics in Lake Placid. And I was quite surprised to actually find or discover that we had both the uh, summer and winter in the same year. I always thought that they were stepped out, but obviously not. So that was it, guys. So the first game we're going to look at today is Asteroids Deluxe. Now, as you can probably appreciate, the further on we get, there's going to be a shitload more. Uh, which got there's going to be a shitload more games coming out. Far too many to really feature. So I'm just going to have one play of each game, and that is it. If I last ten seconds, then so be it. So this, the first one, guys, here is Asteroids Deluxe. Okay, I'm going to stick that light off so you don't see my ugly mug. Right, where are we? Now this was obviously, I've got these keys completely mapped, not very good. <laughs> yeah this was obviously the fall up to Asteroid, I don't think it was anywhere near as popular, although it's actually a really good game. But it's like a lot of things, it's like films as well, games, you know, the sequel can sometimes be better, but it may not always do as well as the original. You can bugger off. When I used to play, I never really played this game back in the day, I must admit, but when I played the original Asteroids, I only ever used to spin round um, without actually moving, because that was just too much for me to handle. So anyway guys, that is that one. Let's move on. Okay then, this is the classic Battle Zone by Atari. Absolute legendary game. Um, unfortunately, it never really... Uh, I mean, there was a few... Was there official home ports? I don't know if there were. Um, the thing, the problem was that this game, uh, trying to port it, it was uh, twin joysticks, or it was actually thrall things, whatever you call them, yokes, is that the right word for it? I'm not too sure. Anyway, I'm prattling a wee bit, let's uh, attempt to play this now. I've configured... Um, I have configured the two joysticks. <laughs> you can see I'm absolute pants at it. Quack! Deary me. Yeah, I've, I've configured the twin joysticks. No, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you sod. Doing 
way better in this game than I've ever done in my life, I think just because I've got the, the joysticks kind of... Because it's virtually play it unplayable without, uh, without two joysticks. <laughs> what the hell is that? Interestingly, ah bollocks, he got me before I got him. Interestingly, there is a whoa. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the reverb and the speakers. The whole cab shaking with that. Uh, yeah, interestingly, a little volcano that erupts in the background. Apparently, the guy that was writing this game. Somebody saw it and uh, or said, I bet you can't, he made a bet that he couldn't make the volcano erupt. And apparently the guy went away one night and put some code in and and uh, it now erupts. So there you go, a little piece of gaming trivia. Anyway, let's uh, crack on guys. Okay, this is Carnival. Now I'm not too sure who makes this, is this Midway possibly? You can see it's got quite a funky, uh, funky little uh, bezel thing to it. I'm going to zoom in again so you can sort of... See the game getting played. Uh, right, okay. Now, I think you have a limited supply of bullets, so you need to really try and make each one count. What the hell was that? Is it eating my bullets or something? I always remember thinking this game is extremely basic, even for an old game. When you compare some other games that were released in this same year. That's what happens. It's game over when you run out of bullets. That is Carnival. Let's crack on. This one is the iconic Centipede by Atari, which was famously written by a bird, which is quite unusual. That bloody spider. You think you should be able to take it out quite easily. But it's just... I don't know what it is. The movement just seems to catch me out every single time. Kill the fleas. Now I've seen somebody playing this, sort of breaking the world record, and it's unbelievable when you see just how many mushrooms there are on the screen. It's almost like the whole screen is filled with mushrooms. If you start shooting the mushrooms like so, then this little flea appears to replace them. It's a great game this though, I love it to bits. You can see at the very top there, maybe you can't eat, there's a green uh, mushroom which has been poisoned by this little sod. Where does he basically poisons them and then when the centipede hits the poison mushroom, it just plummets down the screen. Fire. Now I've played this quite a bit and you can maybe see my high score, I don't know if I've got the, the top of the screen out or not. It's not very high. In fact, 
I'm almost, almost going to beat my high score. This doesn't say much for my high scores. You bugger. Yeah, where this game really gets difficult is when all the... You get to the bottom of the screen like so and you haven't a bloody clue where they are. This game, obviously, it used the, the trackball. Ah, bugger. Just under 20,000. Oh, I've still got an extra life. Excellent. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, guys, that is Centipede. And, yep, the classic games just keep on coming. I think 1980 was definitely the year of the vintage uh, games. Absolutely stunning games. Yeah, I'm trying to remember where. Aye, ah, okay. I love this game a bit. So I've played it a wee bit, and I can get to maybe I don't know level six or something. But again, it's it's a brutally hard game. And again, this was a year where. There was uh, the trackball seemed to kind of make a bit of an entrance. You had uh, you had centipede and you had missile command. Um, I'm trying to think there weren't that many more. Obviously, marble madness, crystal castles. I think they were the only four sort of trackball games that I can remember. Now, as I've mentioned before, not name dropping, but my good mate. Tony Temple is the world champion at this game and Tony did tell me is the secret to this game is to plant your bomb and move on. What what people tend to do that they've never really played the game before is they tend to plant a bomb and wait for it to explode before they, uh, they move on and you can't afford to do that. You've just got to plant it and be confident that where you've put it, it's going to uh, do its job. Dead on, and I've just made a total arse of this. And I'm completely defenceless. <laughs> right, I'm doing it one, one city. And we've got a bonus one, so up to two. So, really, all we want to do here is try and defend these two cities and also defend your missiles, which I haven't really done very well. And I've just lost all my cities, so it's game over. Even an iconic ending, the nuclear war has won. This is it all really? That is Missile Command guys by Atari. Okay, this is the ridiculously difficult Mooncrester by Nikabutsu. I'm trying to think what other games they mean actually. But this was a, a great game, but it's really difficult. Um, iconic noises. Hang on, I've noticed I've just, uh... There you go. Yeah, what made this... This game particularly difficult is the completely kind of... It's not stuttering movement. It's the complete random movement of the, the aliens. And they don't seem to have a, a very big uh, sort of kill spot, if that makes sense. Basically an area where you can shoot them. 
It was one of the first, if not the first, video games to introduce uh, the docking sequence. Which basically allows you to kind of level up. Now, I'm quite sure, as you're listening to this video, with that noise, there's about a million dogs in the neighbourhood running towards your house. That's how ear-piercingly loud and high-pitched it is. That is brutally hard, it really, really is. Oh, I think my eardrums are going to explode. Again, it's one of these games that just looks easy. And it's anything but. Again, if you've maybe not played this game, I'm sure the sound effects are probably quite familiar. It's... Right, anyway guys, that's enough of that. That is Mooncrester by... I can't even pronounce the name. Okay, this is Phoenix. This is a great game. Who made this? It was I Amstar. Uh, and is it Century as well? There seem to be different companies that sort of publish games. And this was one of the first games, arcade games, or shooter up games, whatever you want to call it, shmups, to introduce, what the hell, to introduce this little mothership to you to destroy at the end. And it was also one of the first games to introduce a little, uh, <laughs> unbelievable, to introduce a force field that you could put on just when you're about to get rammed. And you can see there the wee guy walks along the bottom of the screen and takes him out, that's unbelievable. Right, we're going for another game of that. Pressing the wrong fire button there, which never helps. Oof. Now there is a, I think it's a bug in this game. You will see, there's a bit where uh, you shoot the birds and they turn into three small little birds. What the hell? And then they start flying back up the screen. Apparently, if you shoot the, the, the three little birds all at once. You get something like a hundred thousand points or something, it's something stupid. I've never managed to do it as you can see there on my high score of six seven thousand one hundred and sixty points. And then you get a bit better firepower in this this level. But again, it's one of these deceptively difficult games. As you can just as I am doing a good job to demonstrate. Again, this level looks... Ah. <laughs> right, anyway, I want to have another shot, but you know what? I don't want to because it's going to run on me, but that is a uh, Phoenix, guys. Okay, this is a uh, Rally X, and this one is by Midway. And again, it's, it's kind of like Pac-Man. Pole position meets Pac-Man. The idea is to try and collect all the uh, the flags, and you're constantly being chased with these little uh, cars. But you've got a smoke thing that you can use. Something doesn't pay to hang about too much like I'm doing, I'm making a bit of a... Oh, I don't believe it. Damn it! That was a dead end. Oh, 
Oops, so there's it. Oh, no, 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 I don't believe I've missed that. Uh, I was in uh, America with my parents in 1982 and I was in an arcade, or I, I can't remember what it was, a restaurant or something, and uh, they had this and I went up to just, pay, I don't have any money, I just went up to kind of look at the screen to watch it getting played and uh, there was a guy fixing it and uh, as he walked away he basically said there you go chum and he gave me something like, I don't know, 20 credits three credits which was really nice of him oh. ah bugger I don't think you should ever backtrack in yourself like that Ah, arse. <laughs> that is Rally X, guys. Great game. Okay, now this is a game you may not have seen in the arcades. Certainly, if you're anything under probably 40 years old, um, this is a Tempest. Now, this game has been made famous by Jeff Minter, who has ported it to pretty much every every machine known to man. Um, it's a game that I must admit I've never really got into until. Uh, TXK, which came out in the PS Vita, started playing that, absolutely awesome game, um, and then I've since started playing it on the arcade, or on my meme cab, um, there's there's various ports, there's a cracking one, is at Tempest 2000, which came out in Atari Jaguar, but uh, what really makes this, set this game apart is uh, it uses vector graphics, but they're actually colour, which is really, really nice, let's just go for the... It's auto fire. And basically, these wee guys are climbing out the web towards you, and it's your job to basically keep them at bay. We're just blasting seven sh shades of shite out of them. Again, this game, uh, this game actually utilised what's called a spinner, um, just a little wheel that you turned. But it actually plays quite nicely using uh, using the trackball, just using left and right in the trackball. But if you've got a PS Vita, then go grab TXK 2000 or TXK, I should say. It's an absolute awesome game. Brilliant soundtrack as well. I do believe it's coming to the PS4. Basically, once these bad guys, the like wee red claw things, once they get to the top, they kind of walk around the top of the web and they'll try and pull you down. Um, avoid the spikes. So. Now these games don't look the best, or sorry, this particular version doesn't look that great because it's using vector graphics and you really need the proper vector monitor. You can see there these claw things. Now I don't know if you can kill them, can you? I think you may be able to walk underneath when you're uh, when it's kind of walking towards you, but I've not really managed to suss it out. Again, it's a brutally hard game. I moved it the last minute there. And it's game over. Right guys, that is Tempest by Atari. 
This game guys is uh, Wizard of War by Midway um, It was one of the, the sort of early uh, games to incorporate speech The speech is actually pretty good <laughs> Now I had this game on the Commodore 64 It came out in cartridge form and it's an absolutely fantastic conversion um, And it's also, yeah, it's, it's two player as well some fantastic music. Now, whoops, a daisy. Now, it's two player, and you may notice I'm, well, I'm the yellow player. Um, the blue player has been controlled by the computer. Now, it is basically. Ah! That was stupid. It, it is basically. You can play as a sort of. play as a team. Alternatively, you can still shoot the other person in the back because he's obviously going to go and get the points, like so. Again, it's another one of these games that looks deceptively simple but what happens you may notice they start going invisible so you can't actually see them and you can have to kind of keep your eye on the radar to try and figure out where they are ah bollocks no 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 But it's a cracking game, it really is. My baby, three higher warrior. Now do my arm doing the air running straight towards them is probably a bit silly. But it's got absolutely awesome sound. Damn it. Ah, bollocks, that game over. Oh, still got one life. <laughs> Man, I've still got a few lives, what am I talking about? Kill the war, kill him. Damn it. Ah, you escaped. I think that was a wizard of the war there. My baby, three higher warrior. Now you get a baby. Ha 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 ha. I think you can see there, you can actually blast. Ah, bollocks. You can actually blast the opponent's uh, bullets. Hey! Hey guys, that's game over actually. That's probably one of my best games, if not my best ever. Show you that game. That is Wizard of the War, guys, by Midway. Okay, this is Cheeky Mouse by Universal. Oh. Never ever heard of the game in my life. Now what, what struck me was that little sprite down below 
looks exactly like what's his name. I can fix it out of uh, Wreck It Ralph. So I can see where they've taken their inspiration. Oh. Yep, that is definitely Wreck It Ralph. Whatever he's, I can't remember his name. There appears to be a lack of any sound effects, oddly enough. Now, I'm not going to suggest anything what these things look like, but I think they're supposed to be uh, mice. But they look like something else when they're stuck down like that, but anyway, that's probably just my dirty mind. Right, now, why do I not seem to be dying? <laughs> now you've got to be attacked by a rabid mouse. Now what's interesting is there's music but I completely lack any noise when you're actually playing the game. Now as you know guys, uh, you know, I do try and feature the sort of the, the more popular games for a year, but it's also nice I think to stick in a few kind of curveballs like this. Games that maybe weren't quite so successful for reasons which uh, are becoming apparent. It's a bit graphic at the bottom, I don't know if you can see the, the guy smashing the rat with the uh, the mallet and plenty of blood. Fix it Felix, that's what I'm thinking of. That is fix it Felix, even even with the, uh, the baseball cap. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not actually quite sure how you die. Well, there you go. Ah, did I fall through the floor? Possibly. Is it game over? Oh, come on. Right, I'm not quite sure what they're doing when they're... Ah, is that, are they getting, are they going under the floorboards and then stealing food or something, is that what it is? And then once they, right, I think that's what it is, they steal your food, nah, there we go, so he's gone hungry, that is Cheeky Mouse, by Universal. Okay, this is Crazy Climber by Neon Busan, or Nitsha Buksu, ah, they did the, uh, they did, what do you call it, Mooncrest as well. Right, now this game guys, uh, it's an absolute sod to configure. It requires two joysticks and I think it controls your arms and legs. So unless you've got twin joysticks, don't even attempt to play this game. Uh, now I've configured my controls. I'm going to zoom in a wee bit so you can see the game. Uh, I'm going to, I've attempted to configure the controls. So let's see if I can actually play the thing. Now, I think the idea of the game is to basically climb. Right, come on. Up! Oh, bloody hell. So you've got to... You've got to basically push up to grab onto the ledge. And then you... Uh, pull down to drag yourself upwards. Now I'm guessing, oops, what's going on here? I'm guessing some of these, uh, whoa! <laughs> right, okay. Now I'm guessing these in this game never got converted to the homes because it is so bloody. Ah, where you go? It is so uh, difficult to actually play. easy. Whoops. So you need to kind of push both joysticks to uh, move to the side. It takes 
every ounce. Ah, oh, piss off. Bugger off. There you go. I've got to say, it's actually... It's strangely... Uh, oh, piss off. Fucking shiting on my head. No! Right guys, that is crazy climber and it is indeed crazy. Okay, this is a Space Panic by Universal. Um, now, this was a game that was one of the first kind of games to be ported to the 8-bit machines. I remember uh, playing a version of this on my Commodore 64. Now, I think basically the idea is... Oh, that's off, is you put to dig holes. And the wee baddies fall into the holes. He looks pissed off. <laughs> oh, here you go. That's still no easy. Oh, here you go. Right. Come on. Let's be having you. Now, wait a minute. I'm obviously missing something here. Why didn't he die? How do you kill him? Right. Ah, wait a minute. Is that right? I'm going to go for one more go with this. Right, I don't know if there's two buttons. Maybe that's what it is. Right, whatever's happening is now no longer want to dig. For a simple game, it's bloody rock hard. Come on, I want to kill at least one. At least give me that. Come on! I don't know what's... Hey! <laughs> Take that! Oh, that's all. Come on! Let's go! Right, so you press the second fire button to sort of hit him over the head. You can club the thing to death. That's it! Oh! Now that is spectrum sound effects I've ever I've heard. Oh, it's getting trickier! Too close. Ah, bollocks. Right, guys, that is Space Panic by Universal. Okay, this is probably about the best known video game. It may not be the most popular, but it's certainly probably the best known uh, computer game. I'm sure you could probably 
Um, <coughs> you could ask anybody, even who doesn't play video games, to name the character, and I'm sure they'd get it. This is Pac-Man. I never really got the Pac-Man, I must admit. Um, I just basically use the uh, the power pills to try and <laughs> buy as much time as possible. Let's go for one more game. interesting about this game is uh, one of my mates, uh, John Studley, again, he's one of the best Pac-Man players in the world. Um, we interviewed John for one of our podcasts and he was explaining how the, basically the ghosts have two modes. They have, I, I can't remember the terminology used, there's basically a setting where the, the, the ghosts just go around outside of the maze and then every now and again they come into the centre um, and to be good at Pac-Man it's all about understanding and knowing where the where the uh, where they're going to go basically ah bollocks I've just gone up there We'll go get some points. And I think it was one of the first video games to feature sort of like well intros like that. I was watching John playing at uh, Blackpool and basically there's an area, there's a spot in the maze now I think it's, is it here? where they don't get you now I'm sure I haven't probably got it right ah there you go, I think it's only at a certain point if you sit there, the, the, the basically the, the ghosts can't actually see you so that's how guys like John when they're going for marathon scores they can basically park Pac-Man there and uh, they know that they're not going to die. Anyway guys, that is Pac-Man.
Okay, this is probably one of the best known video games um, ever. And it's definitely one of the best video games ever. Although it's absolutely savagely hard to play and I can't play it for toffee. So I'm going to... This might be a two, uh, a two game effort just because I'm so pish. <laughs> Absolutely brutally hard. I mean when this game came out, yeah, most games were one fire button to play and this came out and it gave you something like six buttons that you've got to master. It's got the best, the best firing graphics of any game, bar none, and it's also a, uh, it's also got the best video sound effects ever. Absolutely epic. I'm going to go for one more game of this. I'll take up another thirty seconds if I'm lucky. There you go, that was about 34 seconds I make it. Anyway guys, that is Defender. Okay, that wraps things up for 1980. And what a fantastic year for video games it was. Um, certainly a lot of iconic um, original games um, that went on to spawn a lot of uh, clones. But uh, anyway guys, listen, that is us. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed watching it. Please uh, leave any comments below. If you want to see more videos, please consider subscribing. Um, and please like the video if you enjoyed it. Um, and I think that's it, yep. As usual guys, thanks for watching.